Alright guys, welcome to my second YouTube video. Today we're going to be covering something called route redistribution, which is a fun topic that's covered starting at the CCNP Enterprise and going up. So if you're studying for the CCNA 2301, I mean, who am I to tell you not to watch? But keep in mind that you are probably, actually not probably, you will, you will not be expected to know this content for your CCNA exam. If you want some more CCN level content, the video directly previous list, one of my first video, covers how to set up single area LSPM v2 at the CCNA level. So if you have a good conceptual understanding of LSPF and you just want some extra help configuring it, go check out that video, link in the description below. Today, we're going to be covering again route redistribution. And to help me with that explanation, I'm going to have my little diagram over here. Wow, it looks so cool, right? All colorful shit. Anyway, we have two sites. Well, three if you count the middle. We've got EIGRP, we've got OSPF. So these dot lines right here are physical links. So EIGRP, right, these two neighbors are, or these two routers are neighbors over this physical link and they're exchanging EIGRP routes and they're all happy and they are have they have a fully converted EIGRP topology. OSPF is also running over here so there is an adjacency over this physical link and OSPF is running just fine exchanging routes and everything. Here's the problem. The OSPF routing process doesn't know about the EIGRP routes and the EIGRP routing process doesn't know about the OSPF routes. So any networks that have been shared into OSPF, the EIGRP routers can't get to. And any routes that have been shared into EIGRP, the OSPF routers can't get to. There is a segmentation of routing information sources. And that's not necessarily what you want when you have multiple routing protocols that are interoperating within one large enterprise network. If you have an EIGRP core and other segments of your network that are OSPF as an example, you may want the EIGRP routing process in your core to be aware of those OSPF routes so that they can, you know, do their darn jobs as routers. There's a lot of ways we can get around this actually. All of them with their own advantages and disadvantages. So we could use a, a default route. So a default route is, as a reminder, a route to 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. Interpretation, anything, right? But because the routing table routes based on the best match first, the, the default routes only use as a gateway of last resort. If there's no other more specific routes available, use this route. Well, here's the problem with that. LAT gives one statically defined destination. That's it. If you've got routes both in downstream to your router and upstream to that router, too bad. You can only go in one direction with the gateway of last resort. There's no specificity in terms of, well, I want these networks to go downstream and these networks to go upstream. Nope. Unless you do some other routing manipulation just with a static default route by, well, by itself, there's no kind of selectivity in terms of, well, I want this route, these routes to go down here and these routes to go up here. It's just one destination. And that's the nature of it being a route to what is considered one destination, 0, 0, 0, 0, slash 0, even though it catches a ton of stuff. Redistribution, on the other hand, takes specific prefixes from a routing information source, and I'm careful not to use the term routing protocol because routing protocol defines really a dynamic routing protocol, your BGP, your ISIS, your RIP, LSPF, EIGRP, all of that, whereas routing information source includes connected routes, dike routes, and other sources where you can get routes from. You can redistribute connected and redistribute static. Hence why I'm careful to use the term routing information sources and not routing protocols. But going on, redistribution here at very, very core is a very simple concept. You take routes from one routing protocol 
and you translate them into another routing protocol. A common example that I like to use, a common analogy that I like to use to describe redistribution is an Englishman and the Frenchman, right? You got a translator in between that understands both English and French. And as long as that translator is doing his job, his or her job, of translating the English language to the French language, and vice versa, they can communicate happily. The Englishman and the Frenchman don't understand each other's languages. English words and French words are completely different, and unless that Englishman happened to take French in high school, I don't know, he won't understand what the Frenchman is saying without that translation in place. That's similar to the concept of redistribution. Routing protocols are very, very different in how they sort their routes. For example, OSPF uses a metric of cost. EIGRP uses the composite metric that's made up of a ton of different vectors, bandwidth, load, delay, reliability. OSPF can't just understand an EIGRP route, that's not how that works. There needs to be something in place that translates the contents of an EIGRP route to be OSPF compliant so that then it can be loaded into the OSPF link state database and used within the OSPF domain. That's what redistribution is for. Redistribution takes the role of the translator in the previous analogy. It takes the EIGRP routes and translates them, and vice versa, or however you want to configure your redistribution to work. So, there's a lot of ways you can configure redistribution. In this case, I have a separate border router configured, but you don't need this. The requirement for a router to do redistribution is multiple, but there's one I want to hone into. Is the, and that's that the router that's actually doing a redistribution has to be part of both routing domains. So when I say routing domain, what I'm really talking about is this EIGRP is one routing domain. This EIGRP autonomous system, this OSPF, uh, we don't really call it autonomous system, but I'll use the term anyway. Autonomous system is one routing domain. So with redistribution, we would be, if we use in this example, we would be redistributing from the EIGRP routing domain to the OSPF routing domain. Now, what we're doing when we are redistributing on the router that's actually doing the redistribution, that router has to be part of both routing domains because it has to take routes from one routing domain and put them into the other. The only way that router would know what routes are in the first routing domain is if it were part of that routing domain. So in this case, what that means, simplified, is that this border router right here, I've laid, I've put it as a separate shape on the diagram to visualize it more easily. This border router here has to have a neighborship, an EIGRP neighborship with this router one. And this also has to have an OSPF adjacency with this other router one that's operating with an OSPF. So it's critical that you understand that I can't just have a solely EIGRP router translate routes into OSPF. It has to be running both processes so that A, it can understand both routes, both kinds of routes, and B, so that it can actually pull routes in. Now, here's the thing with a border router. It doesn't have to be a separate router. I don't have to waste thousands of dollars on another Cisco router just so I can do redistribution. Remember, the requirement is that that router has to be part of both domains. Well, if I wanted to, what I could do is delete this and just create a link between these two routers. Because if I were to make this router here, this route EIGRP router one router, neighbors in EIGRP with router two and adjacent to this OSPF router over this link, well, it's just become what we call an autonomous system boundary router. So this is now in its current state an ASBR, Autonomous System Boundary Router. And that's a term that's pretty much only officially used in OSPF. 
it's a boundary to the autonomous system. It's a boundary to the EIGRP autonomous system because it's taking the EIGRP routes and the solid line means redistribution, redistributing them into OSPF. Now, OSPF now knows about the EIGRP routes, but what if we want EIGRP to know about the OSPF routes? Well, we could do this. We could have this router say, okay, now I want OSPF routes to be put into EIGRP. So, and this is actually is not a very good relationship to have drawn. This is a little better. So, this ASBR is doing all of the redistribution. This represents the OSPF routes, this represents the EIGRP routes. So, the OSPF routes are going down to this EIGRP router, the EIGRP routes are going down to this OSPF router, and they're going to get propagated into their various routing domains. Now, I chose EIGRP and OSPF because they have equally quirky ways of handling redistribution. Redistribution RIP is pretty easy. Redistribution BGP is slightly more involved than RIP, but still relatively easy. EIGRP and LSPF are protocols that have quirks when you're doing redistribution, and that's something we'll get more into in the next video. But that pretty much concludes this particular video. In this video, we covered what redistribution is, and how you might implement it from a theoretical perspective. In the next video, we'll go ahead and go into a little more detail on why you might want to redistribute in a practical sense, and how to configure basic mutual redistribution between multiple routers. See you there!